What's up guys, Sam here. In this video, I'm gonna be going over a question that was asked in a Google phone interview. So this problem was given in a 45 minute interview and the prompt was, you are given a list of ranges. Return a random number that's present within one of the ranges. And every number has to have the same probability of getting chosen. All right, so if we look at an example here, we could get something like 17 to 20 could be one range, and another range could be something like two to four. So a number that we could return would be something like 18 or three. Um, you would wanna ask your interview, like, is are these uh, inclusive? So could we return something like a 17 or a four? The answer is yes. Now, if this was a real interview, we would be asking our interviewer clarifying questions. Since we don't have an interview, we're just gonna make some assumptions. We're going to assume that we're going to at least get one list. We're going to assume, uh, you know, the first number is less than the second number. We're going to assume that none of the ranges overlap. So we're going to, you know, pretty much assume that the integrity of our data is good on the input. All right, so let's figure out how we can solve this problem. I'm going to use a little different example here. All right, so in this case, we have three ranges here, 12 to 15, 1 to 5, 32 to 34. So one thing we could do here is we can simply just loop through all our ranges and put all the numbers in an array. So it would look something like this. So we have all our numbers in one array here and then we would simply just pick a random number from here and return that. While this would certainly work, look at all this extra space we're using. You know, and imagine, uh, you know, this wasn't 34, this was you know, 34 million, then we would have to have an array of size like 34 million, which really isn't feasible when we get into a really large range. So this isn't really the best approach here. So another approach that we can do is we can first just check, you know, how many numbers do we have in each range, right? So we can do something like, okay, in this first range, we have four numbers. In the second range, we have five numbers. And then in the third range, we have three numbers. You know, so if we add all these up, we get 12 numbers total. So what we could do next is we can just, you know, pick a random number between one and 12, and then we can get that corresponding number in our ranges. So say, you know, say we get a random number and we get the number five. Well, what we could do is now we can go through the ranges again and say, okay, we have this number five. Are the first five numbers in this range? No, they're not because we have 12, 13, 14, and 15. We have four numbers here, so we know that it's not in this range. So what we could do is we can say, okay, we've gone through four, we can do five minus four here. So now we only need to go one more number. So we go to our next list and we say, yes, okay, one is in the range one through five. So then we'd actually return the number one here. All right, let's take a look at another example. Let's say uh, the random number that gets returned is 11. Okay, we look at the first range, we have the number 11. Would 11 fall in this range? No, it would not because we have four numbers in here. So we do 11 minus four, which gives us seven. So now we look at the second range. Are there seven numbers in here? No, they're not, there are five. So then we would do, okay, seven minus five. Now we have two, we're on the third range. Are there two numbers within this range? Yes, there are. We're gonna return the second number, which is 33. So when our random number is 11, we get the number 33. All right, so now that we have an idea of what we're doing, let's write some pseudocode first before we write the actual code. All right, so let's write our first step here. So we're gonna loop through all the ranges and get the total numbers, and we'll call this total nums. We're then gonna get a random number between one and total nums. Then we're gonna loop through our ranges, so for each range in ranges. So if our random number is within that current range, we're just gonna return the appropriate number in the range. Otherwise, we're gonna subtract the amount of numbers in that range from our random number. All right, so now that we have a general algorithm, let's go ahead and translate this into code. All right, so I defined a function here called getRandom, which takes a that list of ranges. I initialized two variables, total nums and answer, and I also imported the random package because we're gonna need that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through all the ranges and get the total numbers. All right, so now we need to get that random number. All 
Now in our example, we did start with one, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with zero just because computers start counting at zero and it's, it'll just be more intuitive when we write the rest of the code. So at this point, we need to loop through all the ranges again. We're gonna go ahead and see how many numbers are in the current range that we're on. Now we need to check if the random number is within the current range that we're on. And if it is, we know that the number that we're looking for is within this current range. So our answer is gonna be that first element in the range plus whatever we have left over in our random number. And then we can just break out of the for loop there. Otherwise, we're going to subtract however many numbers are in our current range from random number. Finally, we can just return our answer. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out and see if it works. Uh, let's go ahead and use the same numbers that we had in our example. All right, and before we run this, let's go ahead and actually print out what the random number is, just so we can verify that we are getting the correct answer. All right, so let's go ahead and run it. We see that when we get the number one, remember we were starting at zero, so zero would be 12. That random number that we're getting is one, so we are, 13 is in fact the correct answer. Let's try and run it again. And as we see here, we have 11, which is the highest number that we can get in our random number. And we do get a 34, which is the last number in the last range. And of course, if this was a real interview, um, you would want to test it with some more examples, but I feel like for this demonstration, this is sufficient. All right, and one thing that we actually forgot to talk about is the time complexity. So for this example here, so if we assume the size of the ranges is n, we are looping through the ranges once, so that gives us a time complexity of n. We can assume getting this random number is gonna be constant time, and once again, we are looping again through all the ranges. But all the operations that we're doing in here are constant time operations. So our time complexity would be big O of n plus n because we are looping through it twice. So this would be 2n and then we always drop constants in big O notation. So our time complexity is gonna be big O of n. All right guys, hope you guys found that video helpful. If you guys do have any questions, please uh, leave them down in the comments. And if you notice, one of the shorter parts of this demonstration was actually writing the code, which is the way it should be in an interview. You should completely understand the problem. Um, you should figure out how you're gonna solve it. You should have the you know basic steps down. And then once you have that, then you just write the code. So yeah, if you guys found that video helpful, you know I'd appreciate it if you guys hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. But yeah, as always, uh, thank you guys so much for watching and um, keep on coding.